Salary sacrifice is a term that you may have come across, particularly if you are looking into your workplace pension. If you haven't heard of this term before, then maybe you should, because it can do wonders when it comes to helping you save for your pension in the future. In this episode, we'll be looking at what salary sacrifice is, how it works, and the pros and cons. So without further ado, I'm Kozan from Financial Madness, helping you be better with your money. So what is salary sacrifice? As the name suggests, you actually give up part of your salary. Now you don't do this because you want to all of a sudden earn less money, that would be crazy. You do it as a part of an agreement with your employer in exchange for a non-cash benefit, such as pension contributions. Now the most common salary sacrifice schemes is to do with pension contributions, however it does differ between employers. Employers can also offer salary sacrifice schemes to do with company cars, life insurance, critical illness covers, etc, etc. So do check out your employer's benefit list for more information. In this video, we will be focusing on the pension contribution aspect of salary sacrifice. However, if you are looking at another aspect, the concept will still apply, so it's still worth watching on. Also, as the name suggests, you do need to earn a salary for you to be eligible. So you do need to be employed. If you are self-employed, this won't be applicable. How does salary sacrifice work? You essentially make an arrangement with your employer by signing a contract where you agree to relieve some of your salary in return for a particular benefit. Now, the amount that you relieve or sacrifice can vary depending on the scheme, but on the topic of pensions, it is generally up to you as the employee to decide how much of your salary you would like to sacrifice. Although some employers do actually have particular rules with their salary sacrifice scheme, so it's always best to check with them first before going any further. Now, once you are involved in a salary sacrifice scheme, you can usually opt out or even change the scheme at any point you want. But I do stress this again, check with your employer in case they have any particular rules around this as well. So why should we consider salary sacrifice as an option? In a very short summary, it is because you pay less tax when you salary sacrifice. And this is because the proportion that you relieve or sacrifice is no longer subject to income tax, nor is it subject to national insurance tax. And these are taxes we are always subject to every time we get our paycheck. And your employers also get a benefit from this arrangement as well. And that is because they too also have to pay national insurance for employing you. And this is to do with your salary. And because your salary has effectively been reduced, they too also pay less national insurance. And usually the savings that they get, they will also add this to your benefit. And in this case, it will be in terms of your pension contributions. And for most cases, if you are salary sacrificing your pension contributions rather than going through the normal auto enrollment route, you can actually see an increase in your take home pay. And I will be showing this in an example a little bit later on. So if you are a bit confused, do hold on for a little while and hopefully I can clear things up for you. So in short, salary sacrifice means that more money is being spent on benefits to do with you rather than being given to the tax man, which is really great because this offers us a really great tax efficient way for us to contribute towards our workplace pension. And that allows it to grow even faster than perhaps it could have done before. And if you've seen my earlier videos, on workplace pension, you should know that having a workplace pension or even a private pension for that matter is really crucial for our personal finance journeys and is also really important if we want to maintain a higher standard of living than if we were to rely just purely on the state pension. Cool, so let's get straight into the example. Now, I do want to stress that salary sacrifice can be very complex. There's a whole host of tax reasons, so there are some assumptions based on this. However, I do think my example is probably one of the best I've seen online, not that I want to brag. But yeah, when I was researching this, it actually took me a lot longer than I was expecting because I have a good knowledge of salary sacrifice, but I wanted to make sure that I could back them up with some good numbers and numbers that can easily translate to someone that isn't very in tune with personal finance. And it actually took me a long while because online there's a whole host of different examples. Some of them don't even show the mathematics or they use very, very basic assumptions. So I'm hoping here 
I've got a spreadsheet and I'll put a link in the description box down below if you want to have a look at the mathematics behind it. Um, but yeah, hopefully it's very, very straightforward. But do let me know in the comment section down below if, of course, you do have any further questions. So yeah, let's get straight into it. Just one quick note before we jump in. Unfortunately, this example won't be applicable if you are living in Scotland. Annoyingly, a few years ago, Scotland introduced its own rules for salary sacrifice. I did have a read through them and it does look like it is a bit more complex than the rest of the UK. Um, but do let me know in the comment section down below if you would like me to do a video on the Scottish rules. Um, but yeah, otherwise, let's jump in. So in this example, I'm going to demonstrate the difference of an individual who contributes 5% towards their pension through the normal auto-enrollment route. This, of course, is the minimum requirement for employees. And I want to show the difference of if that person decides to do a 5% salary sacrifice instead and how that looks like. So, yeah, let's look at the first scenario. So this is a person who earns £25,000 per year and they contribute 5% towards their pension pot. Now, 5% of £25,000 is, of course, 1250 However, there's a whole host of tax rules when it comes to pension deductions but it actually only costs them £1,000 and they get the remaining £250 from the government in the form of tax relief. So we've got £25,000 and they've got a pension deduction of £1,000. Now, if we're looking at their taxable income, so every individual here in the UK for this current tax year, 2021 to 2022, has an allowance of 12570 This leaves them with a taxable income of 12430 they are a basic rate tax holder, which is a charge of 20% on tax. So they will be charged £2,486 on income tax. And for national insurance, this works out to be a charge of £1,851.84. And that means their take home pay is £19,662.16. I've also provided a monthly breakdown and their monthly take home pay is £1,638.51. Now let's look at their pension pot in this situation. So we've got the £1,000 that they contributed uh, from their pension deductions. And then we've got the £250 tax relief that they received from the government that I mentioned earlier. And the employer contributes 3% of their salary towards the scheme. And this comes to £750. 3% is, of course, the minimum requirement from the employer in the auto enrolment scheme. And that means they will be getting a total of £2,000 worth of contributions towards their pension pot every year. Now let's look at the same example. So they earn the exact same money, £2,500. However, they decide to sacrifice 5% of their salary. 5% of 25k is £1,250. That means that their gross salary is now £23,750. And then at the bottom here, I've just put in the salary sacrifice amount. Um, instead of their pension deductions as I did in the previous example. Now their taxable income will now be less because their gross salary is less. So yeah, as I mentioned before, they have a, an allowance of 12,570. That leaves a taxable income of 11,180 pounds. That means their income tax will be to the tune of 2,236 pounds. This is 250 pounds less than in the previous example. And national insurance works out to be £1,701.84, which is a saving of £150. And then all in all, their take-home pay will be £19,812.16. Now, this works out to be an increase in their take-home pay of £150. Now, let's look at their pension pot. Now, we don't have the employee's contribution or tax relief like we did in the previous example, but we do have our sacrifice amount, which is... 1,250, and then we have the employer's 3%, which still stays the same as the previous example at 750 pounds. And that means the total contributions towards their pension pot every year is still 2,000 pounds. Now, one side note on this is that I did mention that employers do get a national insurance saving when you salary sacrifice, and they usually add this saving into their contributions as an extra benefit to you. Now, this will obviously depend on employers, but you can expect this actual pension pot to be increasing by that savings amount. Now, I'm no tax expert, which is why I have left out the saving of national insurance contributions from the employer side out of this equation of your new pension pot. But as you can see that even without this saving included, 
the total of the pension pot is the same in both scenarios. Now, that means that if the employer includes their national insurance savings to this, that means your pension pot in the salary sacrifice situation will actually be more than if you chose not to salary sacrifice. So overall in this scenario, by sacrificing 5% of your salary, your take home pay has increased by 150 pounds and your pension pot at a minimum has stayed the same in both scenarios. But it is most likely that your pension contributions will increase due to the fact of your employer adding in their national insurance savings. Cool, so let's start with the pros. By salary sacrificing, you are effectively reducing your salary, and that means you pay less income and national insurance tax, which usually results in increasing your take home pay. And it is a great tax efficient way for you to contribute towards your pension pot. Another advantage, which I obviously didn't show in this example, is that usually employers redirect their national insurance savings towards your pension pot as well, which will normally see your pension contributions for that year to also increase. And one last thing is that if you do actually change your mind about your salary sacrifice scheme, there is usually no penalty or disadvantages for opting out or changing the scheme itself at any point in time. But again, do check with your employer in case they have any specific rules around this. Also, just one thing to note, any money that you have sacrificed up until that point in time where you decide to make a change to the scheme cannot be reimbursed. Now, looking at the cons, because you are effectively reducing your salary, this can have some negative implications to other benefits that you may be entitled for. For example, if your employer also provides life cover or life insurance, the benefit that you are entitled to is usually worked out to be a multiple of your salary. And because you have effectively reduced your salary, that means the benefit that you are entitled to will also be reduced. So it is really important that you do speak with your employer to understand what other benefits will be impacted if you do decide to salary sacrifice. Your lower salary may also affect how much money you can borrow, particularly if we are looking at mortgages, where one of the key factors lenders use to decide how much they can borrow is to make sure it is within a certain multiple of your salary. Your entitlements to state benefits such as statutory sick pay or maternity pay may also be affected. But like I said, do speak with your employer to find out what benefits may be affected when you do decide to salary sacrifice. And lastly, this scheme isn't that advantageous for those that are lower incomes. And that's because your income cannot fall below the national minimum wage. That means you will be restricted into how much you can actually sacrifice if your income is roughly around that national minimum wage bubble. Cool, so that is it for this week's episode. Hopefully you now understand what salary sacrifice is, how it works, why we might be interested in it, and the mathematics behind it as well and also the pros and cons of it all. But of course, if you do have any further questions, do let me know in the comment section down below. I do love engaging with you all. And as always, if you did find this video incredibly useful, I would appreciate if you smash that like button that does wonders for the growth of my YouTube channel. And I release a video every single week. So if you do want to keep up to date with those, hit the subscribe button as well. See you later, bye.